بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سو ٹوڈے ان دس ویڈیو وی ول ڈسکس دا پریزنٹیشن آف ڈیٹا ایز ان لاسٹ ویڈیو وی ڈسکس دا انٹروڈکشن ٹو اسٹیٹسٹک ویئر ا ریسرچر نیڈ ٹو نو اباؤٹ دا ویریبلز اینڈ دا ڈیٹا کلیکشن But after the data collection, the next important step is the presentation of data because generally the information in a large volume, that's a huge amount and we have to organize that data. So presentation of data will provide this opportunity to organize the raw data where information can be easily organized and can be easily understand so we will discuss here the presentation of data so in presentation of data we have the three important tools so generally because the data uh, in a huge amount that's produced we go in the field and our researchers collect the information so there is a lot of information a huge information it's uh, very hard to understand and interpret that information so presentation of data tool will provide this opportunity so easily we can understand that information so the man uh, tools which we discuss in the presentation of data is the classification the tabulation and the graphical displays and these are the three important terms of presentation of data so now we will discuss one by one these three so first we discuss that the classification of data so as of in data has a huge amount so we design that uh, in different groups so where we can uh, re-enter our data so it will be uh, available in a table so a region can easily understand that we can compare different groups we can study uh, important aspects of data but generally when we design the group so entirely uh, individually the group composed of homogeneous factor homogeneous information if that is a uh, basis of uh, age if that's some other quality or quantity but the group must be entirely a uh, homogeneous factors and if we compare that one group to the other group so there should be a heterogeneity and the groups must not be overlap like a group cannot be repeat again that's more than one time a group must be a single time but the units which include a group that must be on the basis of homogeneity so where we can organize that's if a uh, hundred units if that's a two hundred units if that is a thousand units but we can classify it we can classify that data in seven groups in eight groups or maximumly we go to eleven or twelve groups and the classification may be on one criteria or more than one criteria so that we know a single way of classification a multi way of classification so when the data is classified in a properly order so then we can compare between the groups and we can compare with the previous groups and it will provide and uh, that's where we can use our descriptive and inferential statistics so this is actually the classification of where we 
produce the different groups. So the second step, that, that's actually the, the frequency distribution table, that's a classification. So look at here, we have 50 uh, information, that's 50 observation, and we have just uh, organized that information in seven groups. But if you write down from 1 to 50, these all information, so this will be a, a huge, uh, that will be a big table. So now look at, we can compare different groups, like the group from 85 to 89, they have more uh, observation that more frequently occur. It's indicating its importance as that group is more important as compared to the other groups. Like if we look at the first and second group, the 70 to 74, 75 to 79, they have same number of observation. They have homogeneity. This is the information they are providing. And uh, if we look at the last group, that's uh, 100 to 104, they have uh, quite not the um, uh, smallest uh, observations. The small number of observations, that's just uh, four observations. So uh, here is uh, this group is uh, composed of less information. So th this group is uh, providing that uh, I'm less important as compared to the other. So this is actually uh, where we can compare in the different groups. So this is the first step of presentation of data uh, to produce the different groups where we can organize our all our data. That's the second step is the tabulation. We generally table in a very systematic way. That's the presentation of data under some specified name. That some specified name is actually the name of the variables. So each column is re represented by a head name. That's the name of the variable. Preferably the table design under ascending or descending. Or that's very important because we used here that uh, systematic presentation. So that will be an array data. And uh, generally in the research as we have a huge volume of amount, so we have group frequency distributions. We classify the data in groups and along with their frequencies. So that is actually uh, known as the tabulation. Now look at here. This is a uh, uh, as we discuss this in uh, classification example. So this is the same example that here is a 50 observation and we have arranged it in different columns. So that is the first one is class intervals. So that's actually the name, a specific name for this column. That's a class boundary that's providing that's uh, composed this column of class boundaries. That's a class marks. And uh, that's the midpoint, we generally known as a class mark is a midpoint as well, and that's the frequency. So each column is uh, representing by a specific name, and that name is actually the name of the variable. And this is known as a simple table. We call it a simple table when we have just uh, information of single variable and we organize that, that's known as a simple object. Uh, this is now the compound uh, table that we have on uh, basis of therapy and gender. That's positive male, positive result and negative results. So we have now uh, here is uh, the information is not only a single variable but this is a multi -pace. So such a table is known as a compound table. Here is a, uh, the third technique that's used in presentation of data is one of the more important for research point of view is uh, displays. The simple bar chart is very important in the nominal and ordinal data. It's used for discrete categories. So whenever we have uh, like uh, the information on single criterion that's uh, we use a simple bar chart. So each bar is uh, showing 
that's uh, here we have years and uh, that's the uh, uh, profit so look at in uh, it's very simple to understand that from 1989 if we move to 1993 so a regular increase has been found in the profit that is really the bar chart uh, for the profit that's a single criterion and it's easy to understand the nature of the data that's actually uh, have been a regular increase has been found in the data uh, that's a single characteristic data but if you have a multi-phase that's a multi-bar chart so here is uh, when uh, there's more characteristic two or more characteristic that's also a discrete categories we use for the nominal and ordinal data so that is a week one so September is uh, that's a blue and uh, red is uh, that's October so look at here that's uh, we have number of sales so in September the number of sales is more as compared to that's in October so that's uh, that's uh, a good sale in September it's a more demand is September uh, that's it October and that's a week one week two week three but in week one it's showing that in September week one that's more or September first week is more even it's gradually uh, slow down in uh, till the end of the month but in October is more or less as compared to the September so that's actually the multiple charts very important uh, for researchers and this is a component bar chart a look at a single bar that has been cut off with different colors that's the age categories of guests at hotel source hotel accommodation records that's Irish look at the white uh, is more that's presenting more and uh, so light blue is still more and the blue bluish is that's let's as compared to the other two so it's very simple to understand the component that's uh, a single bar has been divided in different components that's also important the component bar that's the time series data as when uh, time is important so we use this graph that's a line chart look at here in the Naya if we consider the company sale from 1986 so it, it's more in 86 but at time move in 1987 it's reduced in 1988 it's make a progress and the progress continues till 89 till 90 till 91 it's moved to the peak that's high and again it slowed down in 1992 that's less sale again it's remained continue till 1993 and again it's make progress from 94 to 96 and again it's reduced so that's the time series that's the time is important that's a variable is affected by the time so it's important that we will use the time series data here the bar chart is not working here the component chart is not working and the last one is histogram that's used for the continuous data like age age is a continuous look at here so that's 1920 now that's from 20 to 30 30 to 40 40 to 50 we have more information about 50 to 60 and <clears throat> that's actually our histogram that's important also to check the normality of data that how the data is normal so this is also important and we are using uh, the histogram to find out that how the data is normal Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you have learned 
some information about how to present the data it's very important up to the collection of data and uh, inshallah next video we will discuss how to find out the center values what is the role of the center values how it help uh, it's in our research so thank you very much for watching video please like subscribe and comment so i can improve videos so it can help you more thank you very much for watching